Okay, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about, but I can tell you that Joe the Shirt is off the cuff. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry there about the uh, seven seconds of dead air. Uh, (laughs) I forgot to play the music. (laughs) Sorry. But well, welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a bit since I last spoke with you. Only, it's only been about five days, actually, which is, you know, it's still a little too long for my taste. But, uh, you know, life continues. It was a very laid-back kind of weekend for me and the, me and the Russian. Uh, we uh, just hung out at home. We did a uh, – well, she did a bunch of cooking, okay, and just fantastic, fantastic stuff. She made a – Stuffed mushrooms, and I mean, she can really, she, you know, she should be on that TV show Chopped because you just give her like the b- most bizarre ingredients, and she will put together something delicious. I mean, she really is such a fantastic cook. Um, and uh, and Sunday morning, she woke up uh, something like three thirty in the morning, some shit like that. And uh, I come out, and she's like, got like all this, all the burners going. She's like chopping shit, mixing shit. You know, she's you know, shit's already cooked somewhere else. You know, it, it was just a bizarre. You know, I'm waking up. I don't know I'm waking up at like a six, seven o'clock in the morning. You know, she's been up for like three and a half fucking hours already, and I'm like going, "Did you make coffee?" <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was a laid back week, and we just hung out together this week, and no, no biggies going on, which sometimes is a really nice thing. Uh, one of the things I, I uh, do enjoy about the Russian, and I think she also enjoys about me, is uh, we are capable of being in the, in the house at the same time, and not, we don't have to spend every fucking moment with each other, which is something uh, that a lot of people don't seem to have. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Uh, there's uh, With some couples, uh, be the straight or gay or what have you um sometimes there's like one person in the in the couple who if you you're both at home it's 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 like they they just insist that you do something together you know especially if it's a weekend you know you both have the day, the time off you should be doing something together and i know that you know in the busy world that we live in you know between work and and your kids and your friends and Whatever else you do, you know, to keep you yourself sane, uh, you know, spending time with your significant other can, you know, it sometimes it can be a bit more of a chore than fun, especially when you know that there's a bunch of things that you'd like to do that don't necessarily involve them. Okay, uh, I mean, a perfect example of this is uh, the Russian loves playing uh, computer games. She loves playing um, hidden object games and puzzle games, and uh, they typically tend to, you know, revolve around vampires and ghosts, you know, and uh, you know, werewolves and shit like that. And and uh, these games are very, uh, well, for me, they're way too slow paced for me, you know. Uh, but every once in a while, she'll be on a, like a simpler portion of the game, and I'll like play along with her. But most of the time, though, when she's doing that. She's got her headphones on. She's uh, either listening to music or she's l- listening to the game. And, uh, you know, she tunes me out. Like, what was it? Uh, yesterday, uh, we spent two hours in the same room and barely said like a dozen words to each other. You know, she was playing her video game. I was playing the Nintendo Wii. I was playing golf and all that other shit, you know, getting a little work out there. I'm sore, by the way. And, uh, and it... And it, and it, and it at one point, I actually mentioned it. You know, it's like, you know, your ex-husband couldn't do this, could he? And, and the fact is, uh, she admitted, you know, she, he couldn't. You know, because it, it was believed that, you know, if we're together, we're in the house, we should be doing stuff together. Or it's the weekend, we should go out and do stuff together. And plenty of, plenty of times, I'll ask my girlfriend, hey, you want to go on a walk with me and the dog? Or you want to go see a movie or whatever? And she's like, no, I, I need my Sunday to just be for myself and just relax and just, you know, defrag. And, you know, and that's fine, you know. I mean, the truth of the matter is, if I really want her attention and for her to do something with me, I can get her to do something with me, you know. But uh, but I understand. I truly do. Uh, alone time is very important to any healthy relationship. It really is. Um, and and, and we, we have the uh, distinct ability. We can have alone time in the house. We have a big enough uh, place here where she can be in one half 
of the apartment. I can be in the other half of the apartment. Right now, I cannot see her. I cannot hear her. You know, she's in the other side of the apartment. She's in the, she's in the office. I'm here in the, the living room, you know, and doing the show here for you guys. And, you know, this hour is for me to do this. And uh, she's uh, finishing up some stuff from work, which she needs to do. And, you know, it would be very selfish of me to just go in there and insist that she pay attention to me, you know, because I've been home all day. I've been doing stuff in the house all day. And now is this is the first time that she's been home and I want her to pay attention to me. But that's selfish. But it's, you know, and uh, the fact that she is doing this work in the other room lets me do this. Because I had no time earlier in the day. I was way too busy. Anyway, you know, I, it just, it's just something that occurred to me really just now. The, the very idea that, you know, sometimes you need for the other, other person to not necessarily connect to you just at this fucking moment. You know what I mean? Um... <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and in the even uh, rarer instance uh, with us, we really do prefer when the other person's just out of the house. I mean, I will be the first one to tell you, I love it when I have the whole place to myself, okay? I just walk around naked all day long, I watch porn, I smoke weed or my cigars, I jack off, you know, I do whatever the fuck I want, you know, and it's nice to not have to worry, you know? Um... <laughs> That's one of the things I love about living by myself. It's the fact that, you know, it's my house. I can do whatever the fuck I want with my time in my way. I don't have to worry about it, you know? But one of the funniest things I've discovered is when I do get that alone time, when she does leave the house, and I have the whole place to myself for the whole day, about a half hour after she leaves, I begin to miss her. <laughs> so go fig, you know? She does, she's admitted to me that she's... She does the same thing. She likes having alone time in the house. She likes it when I, I mean, I'll go out sometimes for a few hours, run errands, walk the dog, uh, go shopping, and I'll be gone for a couple of hours. And she enjoys the time to herself, but at the same time, she misses me while I'm gone, which is a nice thing. I, I, I really, alone time is very important to a good relationship. Alone time and uh, two bathrooms, I think, are essential to a healthy relationship. Hmm. Today's topic, which as once again I've managed to bury the lead on, is called public personal perception. And uh, before I get into that, let me just let you know that uh, the music today is brought to you by 373 Degrees K. Uh, that was their first song, their El Pariso Insieme a Te. I don't know if that's Italian, Portuguese, I don't fucking know. It could be Spanish, I just don't understand it. But, uh, but that's who's bringing us the music today. Uh, yes, uh, public personal perception. I bring this up because there have been times in my life where people have perceived me a certain way that just wasn't true to life, you know? And I've seen other people perceive other people in ways that are not true to who they are or what they are. And I bring this up because um, about, about two days ago, I was uh, I was walking the mutt and... Uh, 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 a woman in a wheelchair gets off the bus, you know. Uh, she gets off the bus, you know, and I've seen this woman before. She lives in the neighborhood, you know, um, and it's a very nice neighborhood, you know. And as she's getting off the bus, a woman that's getting on the bus takes takes out her wallet, takes a $10 bill out of her wallet, and gives it to the woman in the wheelchair. It says, you know, it's like, here, this is for you, please, I hope it helps. To which the woman in the wheelchair is just absolutely shocked because she's not homeless. <laughs> she's not jobless or homeless. She's coming back from work. I know this because I've spoken with the woman, you know. She, t she likes to play with my dog, Jack. You know, she likes to pet him. We've talked to her a couple of times very briefly. But I know that this woman has a home and she has a job. And, you know, obviously she can't drive to work. But, you know, she takes the bus to and from work, and she's just coming back from work. And this woman, this random stranger, is giving her $10 and assuming that, you know, she's having a hard life because she's in a wheelchair. <laughs> you know, I was just, I, I was in total shock, and so was obviously the wheelchair lady, because it, it was just like so surreal. Because this woman made a looked at her and made a snap judgment and just assumed that because she's in a wheelchair, well, obviously, life has not been good to her. Life isn't good to her now, so she needs this random stranger to give her ten dollars. 
It's a part of me that just wanted to go, hey, hey, whoa, no. She, uh, that bitch has got a job. You want to give somebody $10 right over here. <laughs> I can use the money. <laughs> but it was just so bizarre. You know, the, 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 the idea that just because somebody's in a wheelchair, and this woman does have, uh, not, not just in a wheelchair, she's got um, some physical, you know, abnormalities going on. Uh, she she's not uh, mentally retarded. She has some physical issues, you know. But a lot of times, people with those physical issues, a lot of people will assume that they have those mental issues as well. This woman does not. She's quite eloquent, actually. But you know, but she uh, yes to 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 by so the naked eye. A lot of people would like just assume a lot of things about what her mind may be like. You know what her life is like. You know. But, and I just, I just thought about it. It was just such a, such a bizarre snap judgment for somebody to make. And then to actually just give her money. And, and she, she, really, she literally just jammed $10 into her hand and then got on the bus and then left. And the woman's like going, hey, no, wait, no, I don't need this. No, what, where are you going? No, what, what, what? I was giggling my fucking ass off. Uh, I, I've had a similar... I've had I've had a lot of misperceptions about uh, myself. Um, one of my favorites occurred about mm, two or three years ago. Uh, like most guys, I have a uh, I've had we we tend to develop our favorite pair of jeans. And now these are usually the rattiest, dirtiest, holiest, most run down, worn out, ripped pair of pants that we own. But we love them. Why? Because they're soft. They're soft and they're comfy, and we've had them since like before our own mothers were born. You know, we, we just love these jeans, and every guy has at least one pair of these, okay? Unless they're gay. Gay guys don't tend to have these kind of jeans, but straight guys will. And I and I was wearing these jeans, and I was wearing. Uh, I had uh, I had been a uh, you know I've been cleaning in the house that day, and I was wearing uh, an old dirty T-shirt, and uh, I was walking my dog. And, uh, and, uh, and, my, and my sneakers were pretty beaten up too. And this woman walks up to me and offers me $2. And she, she just puts it in my head and says, here, this is for your dog to feed your dog, okay? Make sure you feed your dog. And, 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 and I'm looking at her and... I, and by the way, I did take the money. Don't get me wrong. I took the fucking money. And to which I said, um, you know, I tied my dog off because I'm going into CVS because I'm going into to buy shit. And I go, uh, thanks, but uh, I'm not homeless. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just dressed like shit today. I mean, thanks. But, and, I, and I walked in and I kept the money. I didn't give the money back to the fucking bitch. You know, because <laughs> she looked at me and just assumed that I was homeless. You know, yeah, I, I'm wearing I'm wearing shitty jeans, a dirty T-shirt, fucked up old shoes. You know, because I was cleaning the house, and then rather than like, you know, uh, take a shower and then go out, I wanted to go out, get the shopping done, and then go home and take a shower. But no, this woman just saw me and just naturally assumed that oh, he must be homeless. He looks like absolute caca. <laughs> and yes, I did need a shave that day. It it it, it just. Oh, it confounds me that how people just come up with these. And I got a couple more examples of this coming up, all right? But we're going to take our first break right now. Uh, this is more, three seven, 373 degrees, uh, K, and their song, La Ciacia I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. che di vita ce n'è una ci hanno detto godete vera ci hanno detto andate dove non c'è la luna ci hanno detto la vita sta e se sei solo con un cane guarda non disperare che comunque da tempo si sa se qualcuno da fregare, qualcun altro da non amare, sta tranquillo, qualche stronzo lo sa. Lascia che sia, lascia che sia un po' di tempo e poi via. Lascia che sia, lascia che sia un po' di tempo e poi via. Shh. 
show the shirt is once again off the cuff. Yeah, yeah, I said it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Joe the Shirt's off the cuff. I am your host, Joe the Shirt. Uh, we're talking about public personal perception. Uh, what people think of you when they see you walking on the street. Uh, and we've all done this. We've, we've, we've all looked at somebody on the street, at the supermarket, in any sort of public place, and make, and make uh, snap judgments about these people. Um, one that I am guilty of was uh, when I was in college, quite young. I was uh, 18 years old. Uh, I, went, I went to college, and uh, I was there with my best friend, uh, Tony. And uh, we, he was there a year earlier than me. And uh, we're in line, you know, we're, 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 at the, we're at the cafeteria waiting to get our grub, you know. And, we see, and I see this guy, this very, 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 very muscular, tattooed guy uh, working uh, in the cafeteria. And to which I say to my buddy, uh, Tone, I go, Tone, hey, check out Mr. Dunn Time. At, you know, at reference to that he's been to jail, most likely. Um and he looks at me and he's like, you're just assuming that that guy's been to jail because he's really, really muscular and he's got a lot of tattoos and he's black. And I go, well, yeah, that and the dreadlocks, probably, you know. And uh, <laughs> I was making a joke, but in the, there was a small part of me that was actually really decently serious about it, you know, because I, I was assuming that this guy looked like he had been to jail. It's an old joke that uh, Dave Chappelle talked about and uh, Chris Rock. How you see a really, really muscular uh, white guy with tattoos, you just naturally assume, well, wow, that guy really works out. You know, he's really in shape. He likes to take care of himself. Where you see a really muscular black guy with a lot of tattoos, you think, wow, he's been to prison. Uh, you know, and that's an awful, awful snap judgment to make. It's not always wrong. But it's an awful snap judgment to make. You know, that'd be, that'd be assuming that, you know, just because you're a big white guy that's muscular, tattoos, wears a lot of leather, and rides a motorcycle, that you're a meth dealer. <laughs> Good chance you are, <laughs> if you watch the Sons of Anarchy. But, you know, uh, but we all do this. We all do these things. Um, here's, here's one for you. This one that uh, you may not believe about me, but... 99% of the time, when people meet me for the first time, they think that I'm very, very quiet, conservative, uh, and, uh, you know, not very outspoken at all, not very opinionated. They think that I'm this very meek, humble kind of person. And the truth of the matter is, I'm keeping my mouth shut so I can assess the situation and figure out what it is I can fucking get away with. All right? I don't like to... I've learned, okay, from experience to keep my mouth shut until I, real, until I understand who it is around me and who it is, you know, uh, you know, might get offended by something I say or something I do. So I keep my mouth shut. And so people think I have a very low-key personality when they first meet me. And uh, nothing, as you all know, is further from the truth. Um, but people think that about me when they first meet me, you know. I mean, I remember my, my teachers used to refer to me as, Joseph, he's one of the quiet ones. Let's keep an eye on him. <laughs> Uh, another one of my uh, one of my favorite stories about public personal perception uh, was one time I was in Las Vegas, uh, and I had uh, recently gotten married. This so this was a while ago. We're talking, good God, like uh, like thirteen years ago, and I, <laughs> since divorced. <laughs> and uh, I uh, at the time I was playing a lot of blackjack, and uh, and I was having a good time, and I was having. I was doing all right, you know. My uh, my wife uh, was not a big gambler. She liked to play the nickel slots, you know. So I would give her, you know, I would give her a hundred bucks and say, "You know, go have fun." And uh, she would say, "No, no, I don't need that much. I'll just take 20 I'm like, "I'm giving you a hundred dollars to leave me alone. <laughs> go have fun. <laughs> have some drinks. <laughs> have a have an appetizer. I don't give a fuck, you know. Just whatever." But Anyway, so then she, uh, 
Uh, so I, I go to the blackjack table and I'm playing. And then she comes back to me. And and on her way to get to my table, she stopped by hotel management, uh, the casino management and security, and told that she's not allowed to be there. And she tells them, "What? What, what are you talking about? Why not?" And she's like, "Well, they tell, well, we don't. We, you understand why we don't want you here? Okay, it's not good. You know, we we just don't want you here. All right, we just want letting you know that you're not allowed to be here." And she's like, "But." I just want to go talk to my husband. And they're like, and they, and this is what she relates to me. <clears throat> they go, well, who's your husband? And he's like, it's that guy right over there at the blackjack table. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, go ahead. And they let her go. And, they, and she comes to my table and she, she tells you what happened. My wife at the time, um, let me paint a picture for you. She is uh, five foot ten and a half, long red hair, green eyes, uh, legs that go all the way to the fucking sky. Uh, she was dressed in a leather black mini skirt, uh, fishnet stockings, a faux fur leopard top with furry trim, and uh, serious. Uh, CFMHs, also known as Come Fuck Me Heels. Okay, so she's five, almost 5'11 to begin with, but then she's also wearing like three and a half inch heels. She's like almost six foot fucking two here, okay? And, uh, and she's all done up in the hoe makeup. And uh, she tells me what happened, and I go, and she asks me, why, why, why did they tell me that? Why did they stop me like that? Why, and I'm like, they thought you were a hooker! <laughs> She's like, no. I'm like, really? You don't think that that's a reasonable response? Look at how you're dressed. <laughs> the CFMHs, the fishnet stockings, the le the leather mini skirt, the fucking faux leopard print top. The tits are all hanging out. You got all the hoe makeup on. I mean, shit. You, I think you look like a hooker. And mind you, I meant that as a compliment. I was like, good, cool. That means that people around here think I can afford a hooker. Awesome. <laughs> Oh my god, I laughed my silly giggly ass off for so long. And uh, you know, and that's what I'm talking about. It's these guys saw her and they made a snap judgment, which in their profession was probably more often than not accurate. <laughs> but not this time. As far as I know, my ex-wife has never accepted money for sex. As far as I know. <laughs> But you know, th but there's so many uh, perceptions out there like that. I mean, I got one of the most popular perceptions out there that people have, especially in this town, uh, is whether or not somebody is gay. I work with a, a buddy of mine, my buddy John, who is a younger, good-looking guy, thin, in good shape. You know, I'm encouraging him to, you know, try to maybe like get work as a bartender or at the very least start as a bar back because he's good-looking enough. He's smart enough that he can do something like that. He can get a job like this. And I told him, look, dude, and if, you know, if you, you know, optimally get a job at a gay bar because nobody loves uh, straight bartenders more than gay guys. And they love to give money to straight bartenders. And I'm like, well, you know, assuming, of course, that you are straight. And he goes, well, yeah, I am. But, you know, I get that a lot. And I'm like, well, you know what it is? I mean, you're young. You're thin, you're in good shape, and you're a good-looking guy. So, you know, yeah, and, and, and in this part of town, this being West Hollywood, it's not that far to the realm of possibility that you a good chance you're gay. <laughs> Same thing used to happen with my buddy uh, Parker. Really good-looking guy, uh, ex-college basketball player. So he's very tall. He's about 6'5", uh, 6'6". Six, six, six. Uh, really muscular. He looks like... Uh, like like Thor or some shit like that, you know, but, you know, and, but he has a very high pitched voice, you know, he sounds like a, a very young Tom Selleck, you know, and he's got a dog that could fit in my front pocket. It's a papillon, which if you don't know what a papillon is, you can either look it up or just imagine what a long haired chihuahua might look like. That's his dog. Okay. He's six foot six, two hundred and forty pounds, 
with a dog, you know, Paris Hilton might carry in her purse. All right. So I'm like, really, Parker, you wonder why people think you're gay. <laughs> so uh, there you go. I don't know. It's, 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 it's perception is always one of those big things for me, you know. Um, and, and, and I think it's very interesting when people get upset over other people's perceptions of them um, because they don't understand what it is they're putting out there. Like my buddy, uh, my buddy, I have a buddy of mine who is, in fact, gay. And uh, he likes to think that nobody knows he's gay upon, upon first meeting him. But he exudes gay, all right? He, uh, total gay. And, and, and I love the boy. I truly do. But I remember him asking me, he's like, hey, Joe, you didn't know I was gay when you first met me, did you? And I'm like, dude, I knew you were gay before I knew you were black, all right? Are you fucking with me? Of course I knew you were gay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know what? They're called stereotypes for a reason, all right? They, they, they exist for a reason because it's happened enough times that people can, you know, we can make some snap judgments here and there, you know. But, I, I, but there's some, t and, and you know, being thought of as homeless didn't bother me in the slightest. I was like, hey, great, thanks. Thanks for the two bucks. Appreciate it. I'm going to use this to go buy beer. <laughs> um but uh, there's some snap judgments that I don't care for. Uh, I've, and, and we've all had those. I mean, some snap judgments that are just so personally offensive that I, I, I get very angry at. Um, one time, uh, I was hanging out at my buddy's place, and uh, I was a little wasted. What a shock. And, uh, you know, there was a woman there who uh, I knew had, you know, had a little bit of, a little bit of the hots for me. But um, I had no real interest in her. She, I did not find her attractive in any way. I mean, she wasn't ugly. She wasn't fat. She wasn't, you know, whatever. She just didn't do it for me. Okay? I knew plenty of guys would love to bang her. All right? But I, it wasn't for me. So I'm hanging out there. I'm, like, sitting on my buddy's bed. You know, he's in the other room, like, mixing up drinks. And uh, she gets into bed with me and starts, you know give me the little feel around and I was like whoa whoa I get up I just left the room and the next thing I know you know she's telling everybody I know that I'm uh that, that I hate women that, 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 I, that, that I hate women or that I'm possibly a homosexual I'm like no that just means I didn't want to have sex with you and believe it or not the shirt here your pal the shirt Joe the shirt has been known to turn down women. And I got to tell you, women do not take that shit well. <laughs> women do not take rejection well when it comes to sex. Men, we've learned how to take rejection. You know, I've been rejected so many times. They sh women should all just come with a rubber stamp and just hit me with it, you know. Um, but, <laughs> but women are so used to the idea that men always want to have sex with anybody that comes along that, you know, it doesn't occur to them that, well, maybe I really don't want to have sex with you. You know, just there's something that I don't like about you. Anyways, it's time for a break. <laughs> I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff. And here's more of 373 Degrees K, La Vita e Mia.
And Jella Sheridan is off the cuff. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I think I forgot to turn off the uh, silencer button. You guys could hear me, I think. I'm having a sip of my beer. Opening up the can, cracking it, you know, having a drink. Okay, welcome back. Joe Shirts off the cuff. I'm talking about public personal perception, but we're done with that now. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about animal rights. Um, now, as you know, I am a big animal lover. I am. They're delicious. Um, I kid, obviously. Actually, no, I mean, they are delicious. But, um, Here's the thing. Uh, I do make a very distinct distinction between us and them. Uh, I I see the distinct distinction between humans and everything else. I'm not saying that we're not all connected. I'm not saying that we aren't related in some way, that there's a cause and effect involved in how it is we treat every other species on this planet. Uh, that being said, I also understand that, um, like every other species on the planet, I care about mine the most. And considering how much I don't care about so many members of my species, yeah, you'll, you'll have to put that in perspective when compared to how I feel about other species, period. All right? Now... <clears throat> I've always believed uh, if I'm on top of the food chain, I'm going to take advantage of it. I'll eat whatever the fuck I want. Uh, you, you, got, you got dolphin burgers? I'll have a dolphin burger. You got Kom- Komodo Dragon Franks? I'll have a Komodo Dragon Frank. I will. I'll do it. You know. Uh, got some koala chops? I'll eat a koala. Not a problem. You know. Um, <laughs> but only if that's the only thing that's available. I don't believe in... Uh, eating things just because they're rare or exotic. Um, I believe that you should eat because you need to survive. And I am not a vegetarian. I'm never going to be. I'm not a vegan. Lord knows I'm not going to fucking be that. Uh, And I have nothing against anybody that is vegetarian or vegan. You know what? Good for you. You've made your decision, and that's great. But I don't need to hear your fucking guilt trip when it comes to what I do. Um, I, I, I've always said that uh, too many people, especially those people in PETA, are a little too cordial with the animal fucking kingdom. All right. Um, sorry, no, I'm on top of the food chain. As my friend Fauna likes to point out, we have canines for a reason. They're for biting, tearing, shredding, and not just vegetables. We are the only species on the planet that is expected to think about all the other species. <laughs> you know what? Lions eat uh, fucking gnus. I gotta tell you, I, I, I'm willing to bet that lions, anytime they go out hunting, they don't worry about the gnu population at all. <laughs> Whatever they find, they kill it, they eat it, and then they shit. Okay, that's all there is to it. Um, but, uh, there's some things I do believe. You know, okay, here's one. Uh, the United States is uh, cracking down on... Uh, ivory trade within the United States, um, which I think is a good thing. Also, not just uh, ivory trade, but also rhinoceros horn. Uh, the U.S. has uh, come under, as the Obama administration has uh, decided to, that they will ban the trade of elephant ivory, uh, prohibiting its import, export, and resale within the United States. There are a few exceptions, like for instance, if it's an antique ivory sculpture that you've had in your family for you know god knows how many years all right now there's no reason in the world for you to have any rhinoceros horn really isn't you can't sculpt it you can't it, it's not used as a decoration it's used mostly in uh some eastern medicines to improve health overall vitality and as a lip dick cure uh which is as about as dumb as you get Ivory, as we all know, is used uh, mostly for decorative purposes, horns, cups, art, sculptures. But there's only one way to get ivory. 
And that means you have to kill the fucking elephant. Now, there are pygmy tribes in Africa that routinely hunt and kill elephant. And then they butcher, cook, and eat the elephant. I have no problems with that. If you are part of some aboriginal style tribe and you have to eat whatever you fucking get your hands on, then you go ahead and do that. And if it happens to be an elephant, then so be it. Odds are a full-grown elephant will feed a pygmy tribe for about a month. <laughs> Pygmies are tiny. But um, if the only reason you're killing this elephant is to get its ivory so you can sell it on the black market or make a decoration out of it and then just leave the rest of the carcass behind and not use it for anything, well, then you're an asshole. As, uh, as I would say about Americans uh, back in the 1860s particularly uh, and before uh, when they would hunt bison. Bison here in the, the United States, also known as American buffalo, uh, had these very, and still have, but the population is considerably down, have incredibly rich, thick, wonderful uh, pelts. The fur is just amazing. And um, people, you know, back then would just randomly shoot buffalo, skin them, and then leave everything else behind. All the meat, all the entrails, all the bones, everything about the buffalo besides the skin was left behind. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you, well, Native Americans, they used everything on the buffalo. Yes, they did. But Native Americans were also responsible for uh, mass killings of buffalo uh, where they would uh, corral them into jumping over a cliff. And then, you know, obviously the buffalo die when they, you know, go splat and then go in there and get what they need and want. Um, now, yes, they did use more of the buffalo than any white man ever did. But a lot of times they ended up killing more of the buffalo than even they needed. Some things did go to waste. A friend of mine recently you know, made fun of me you know, because I posted a video of uh, puppies from the place I work at. And she you know, asked, said that you know, I wouldn't have it in me to uh, kill a puppy and eat it. And uh, the truth is, yes, I do. You know, I grew up, I spent time on my grandfather's farm. I cut the heads off chickens. I, uh, I've gone fishing and I've gutted and filleted my, and, skin, and scaled my own fish. I've skinned animals, and, you know. But, these, but in every case, these were animals I was eating. Uh, one of the uh, biggest telltale signs of a serial killer is, is their ability to disassociate themselves from their victims. Um, and that's how I learned to be able to gut a fish or chop the head off a chicken or skin an animal is because I disassociated myself from the being that it was. I treated it as a thing, not as a living, breathing pet or a cute little bunny or whatever, but I disassociated myself from it and I was able to kill it and skin it, scale it, cook it, and then fucking eat it. I was able to do that. Um, and we're talking about some cute animals in there, but I was able to do it. You know, and so... I, I take a back, I take a uh, slightly a back view of animal rights. I believe in animal rights. I truly do. I don't think that animals should not be killed for no reason whatsoever. Killing them for food, I'm good with that. Killing them to survive, I'm good with that. Killing them for decoration, for sport, I'm not good with that. Now, which brings us to uh, orcas. As you know, an orca is a killer whale. Uh, it is either the world's biggest dolphin or a really small whale. 
which by the way, so is a dolphin or a porpoise. It's a small whale. Uh, an orca is a very lar- is, the, is the largest of the dolphin family. Uh, now, a, a bill by, San- by Santa Monica Assemblyman will ban orca shows at SeaWorld is being blasted in San Diego, home of the marine theme park. SeaWorld expressed doubt about the legality of the legislation. Quote, the premise behind this proposed legislation is severely flawed on multiple levels, and its validity is highly questionable under the U.S. and California Constitution. Others said that the ban would also hurt local economy. Quote, SeaWorld is a critical part of San Diego's economy. Hmm. Now, okay, I'll be the first one to tell you. Do I believe that orcas and dolphins and porpoises are among the smartest animals on the planet? Yes, I do. But I have my issues with PETA a lot of the time because PETA has sued SeaWorld on behalf of orcas and dolphins based on slavery. They said that uh, orcas and dolphins and porpoises are so intelligent that to force them to perform tricks without paying them is tantamount to slavery. Now, besides the obvious lack of logic in the argument, that being that... um, you can only make a slave out of someone out of something that is of your species and the obvious uh, other point that you know well it's not like they're not getting anything out of it they're still being fed and cared for they get room and board um i thought it was really offensive to me for peter to compare here in the united states anyway over 400 years of slavery, rape, murder, beatings, uh, the separation of entire families and generations from each other, to a few whales. Look, I don't mean to diminish the plight of the orcas or the dolphins, but um, I don't think it's fair to compare them to human beings. They're not. People, we're on top of the food, the food chain. We run the planet. We run the planet for a reason, okay? And if orcas could find a way to kill and eat you, they would! <laughs> if orcas could find a way to exploit us to service them, they would! If orcas could find a way to get us to, like, you know, go swimming and make funny noises and balance a ball on our noses and they would get paid in fish, they'd do it! You cannot be overly cordial with the animal kingdom. That's all I'm saying here. And that's my time for today, actually. Our uh, last song today is not by 373 Degrees K. It's by 857. And their song, Nervous. Thank you for listening. As always, a great, great, great pleasure for me. Uh, Thank you for helping me keep the demons down in my head. I'm Joe the Shirt, and I've been off the cuff. Lessons are learned as I'm pressing the verbs. Nothing's left of you herbs. Out of breath on the curb. Cause of death, every word I say. And spray like venom, y'all fade like denim. You say I don't be right, but I seem to be the guy y'all wanna be like. Oh, he's a beginner. Leave you shriveled like them leaves in the wind. Feel the anxiety when you're eyeing me. Sporting shiny outfits that be blinding me. While I'm on stage performing, I ignore cause y'all not important. A portion of this. Got your coughing and ish, switch it up, sip the cup, cause y'all too scared to guzzle, put a muzzle on me, 23rd, who you be, spread the word, wait and see, hate me, blatantly, shame me, maim me, try and tame me, nervous, we hear all around, nervous.